ladies and gentlemen, we had the Detroit Bass Fest. We had the Detroit Bass Fest with none other than our own Detroit bass player, the legendary Mr. Nate Watts. How's it going, bro? Man, it's going great. It's a pleasure to be here, man. I mean, you know, I'm really honored to be here. You know, all these great bass players is here, man. You know, came up with a bunch of them, and there's still a bunch of them here. It's a good thing to see. Uh, now you're gonna be uh, doing a little performing here. What you doing here today at the base? I'm doing a little. This is like a little performing clinic, like you know, talk about my past experiences and all the, all the different songs that I played on and I felt during that time, and try to get a little audience participation. Let them sing with me because I most of the songs they know. If they're from the old school, they know them, so they can sing and have fun. We go just try basically have fun here. Okay, now sitting in with us doing this uh, interview is one of our other Detroit bass players, Mr. Mr. Goldie, also known as William Glenn. How you doing, bro? I'm doing okay, my brother. I'm trying to hang on in there, man. It's a pleasure, man. I mean, an honor, man, to sit with one of my idols. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm my idol. Mine, if you remember, uh, I mentioned it. Uh, he's, he's one of the oh people, yeah. so that, and we about to find out the reason why. All right. And, 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 and uh, like I said, it's a, a pleasure and an honor to get to do this interview with you it's on behalf pleasure. of Detroit bass players all over the world. Um, and you know, it's a lot of us all over the world, too. Yeah, you know and, that. And, and we got a reputation, too, you know, as some smooth criminals, you know what I'm That's saying? That's right. On that That's right. I was just talking to Byron Miller the other day. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, Detroit, uh, yeah. I, I, what, I, I, I think Eddie Watkins up north. You know, I did that last year. I did the Jameson uh, uh, tribute. I was in the NAM show, yeah. and everybody was there, man. Everybody and their mother were there. And I'm going to thank everybody for coming out for that, too. Well, well, let me ask you something. It's, it's a, a tradition of mine. When did you start playing, man? When did you start? 72. Same year I started. Yeah, 72. I played, I played trumpet through. Through uh, Northwestern, the high school, '72. I started playing. Actually, I started a little bit before '72, maybe about the, the end of '71. Because I played, I played with um, the Final Decisions. I think that was '70. It was '72. It was. Okay. Why? Why, Nate? Huh? Why did you switch? Well, Ray Parker. Oh. Uh, we and Ray Parker had a band in elementary, right? Me, Ray, and Ollie. Okay. And we grew up on the same Ronnie block. Park. Yeah. On Virginia Park. Yeah, on Virginia Park. We all grew up on Virginia Park. Okay. I was five doors and we grew up together. We had a band in elementary. And so he got with Marvin and started going with everybody around town. He said, Man, you should get a bass. And then we could be we could be like Hendrix. We could be like Hendrix. We could be like Hendrix. Okay. I got a bass and he left. <laughs> we left. We stayed. Okay, well, the, the other one, and this is essential, this is something I really want to know. By you being an influence to so many of us, who were some of your influences as a I met Jameson, Lucky Green, Chuck Rainey, uh, let me think of some. Uh, uh, even even Stanley, I, 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 I was in the, wasn't in his field, you know, I didn't play like him or anything, but I love to listen to him. And Jocko was a mother. Oh, yeah. Oh. Jocko was a And then, you know what? They're doing a documentary now on Jocko, a friend of mine's uh, Rob. Rob, 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 Rob Trio. Trio. Uh, yeah, he, uh, from Metallica, is doing a, uh, a documentary. He's getting everybody in it. It's gonna be a great documentary for Jocko. You gonna be in it too? I'm in it too. Yeah, because yeah. I know y'all, you met him around the time he was around. Because y'all yeah. did shows together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, man, I ain't wanna keep you, but before I let you go, we're gonna just, just gonna take a peek at your uh, piece at the jo Detroit Bass Fest. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can start it, guys. I wanna thank you guys for having me to come. I really appreciate it. It's good to come home and see great people. And I'm gonna need all of y'all help in singing this song. Cause we have no singers, no people. You gonna sing rap? No, y'all gonna rap and sing. Okay, okay. Y'all gonna rap and sing. Gotta answer that question. So the first song I'm gonna do is Do I Do. I just wanna go through a little bit of it and let you know. And once again, thank you for having me. First off, okay, who's gonna sing that? This side, do I do? Come on, come on, man. Do I do? That's good. That's good. Do I do? Do I do? That's good. Okay. Do I love? Do I love? 
Okay, next up. I do. That's you. Oh, they got Ernie here. Okay, all, 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 all three of y'all together. One, okay. One, two, three, four. One, two. Do I do? Come on. Come on, y'all. What? And you can't clap your hands. Do I do? Studio. 
And I come out the room and I'm looking over and he's standing right there. He was with my official. We both, we both didn't, we didn't even have any hair on our face. I said, okay, so we've been going around a long time. Any other any questions for me, guys? Hey, you didn't really tell him the whole thing, though. What, what happened? Dick this. I had just. Oh, let's go around the story. Here we go. He brought me here. I was mad my own damn bit. <laughs> the first rehearsal I had with John McLaughlin, we were going to London. And I heard this music. I look over the next room. He was over there with Stevie. We started our career at the same time. It was so weird. It was very weird. And, 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 and I, the reason I know Ralph, I used to play trumpet when Ralph used to come around on the band wagon. Yeah. Band wagon. Yeah. It was Black Bass and I was playing trumpet. It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. And you know who's here too? Oh, oh. <laughs> We want to give all the praise to who? Who, who, who up? Mr. Rodney Rodney. 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 Yeah, that's why we're not robbing y'all now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just want to know what, what was your first base? Was it percentage? My first base, believe it or not, was a five-finger special called a national. You know what a national was? Anybody know what a national was? Montgomery Ward. Montgomery Ward. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, let's go. What, what, was, what was the series name? T-Stone. Uh, yeah, 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 what frame of mind or vibe were you in when you was doing uh? Do I do? Yeah. We had a full, it was three o'clock in the morning. Okay, because uh, you know, with Stevie it's like nighttime all the time. Okay. Oh, his studio. Yeah, his studio in, in LA. We had, matter of fact, we just had got a mobile truck. Actually, the studio was T.J. McGregor's before that. That's when Nat King Cole and uh, all the uh, all the big band stuff was done there before. The, before. Oh. And we had, we we didn't even have a, uh, a recording uh, board yet. No, we had we just bought a truck about um, record plant mobile truck recorded with that. And the move was this: let's play. At three o'clock, let's have fun. Okay. Three o'clock in the morning, but it came out great, man. I was really surprised about this one thing about it that he let me play so much. Um, you know what I mean? That, that I mean, usually it was Nate. Yeah, you was killing that bass. And then, and then, yeah, yeah, you usually yeah, say, you "Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it." But you usually say, "Nate, you playing too much. Yeah. Nate, you playing too much. Come on, don't play so much, Nate. This time he didn't do it. No, no, I was glad about that. Was it, it, and I heard him. I heard him say, he to the engineer, he said, "Hey, man." Like, man, he's playing this ass all right. <laughs> 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 it made me feel good. <laughs> like, I was young. Like many of us, did you uh, have trouble, you know, um, switching to five when they first started really getting into the five? Yeah, I did at first, but I knew it was something that it gave me an advantage, especially with a lot of Stevie stuff. That I and mean, that's how I've been working right. with it. Because a lot of a system goes down below a regular E. Right. So now I, 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 I you can't go nowhere where I can't go. You know, so that's the best thing about it. That's for sure. Yes, yes sir. I have, now a lot of people don't know this, but at that rehearsal, back in 1974. Yeah. Steve, he was one of the first cats, him and Michael Henderson. Yep. He had four string, pay attention. 
<laughs> and Stevie made you tune the E flat. Wrong. I was already in the E flat. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, he was. Are you, did you know? You know when I started playing E flat? When I was playing here with a guy named Martin Hendrick, uh, with Martin Kitchen, uh, we were playing Hendrick and we were playing OCC. Okay, well what I was trying to say, uh, uh, Brother Nate, uh -huh. is that you were one of the first musicians ever saw Lord of the East. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. the E or the whole bass? No, the whole bass. The whole bass. Oh. I, I still do the same. Oh, I tried, yeah. If you look at my fingers, you, you wouldn't know what no key I'm in. I'm a half step. Oh, low on so. So, this thing, I played that guy, he thought I was playing in C, I was playing in B. So, that's the way I, I, I did it. But I started that with uh, Martin Kitchen, because he, uh, Hendrix used to turn down the E flat and E. And the Hendrix did both of them. That's why I started. Okay, I'll go to Nate and get more questions. Yeah, on Huh? Only when we was in the back a while ago, a couple of guys was asking me because I asked you, but I forgot. Uh -huh. When I was asking you about the three, when I was playing those tunes back there with uh -huh. the scales in it, uh -huh. see, but you said it was pentatonic. Pentatonic. Yeah. pentatonic we call yeah. it Steve Pen Pentatonic P. Right. As most of the scales are always pentatonic. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Can I say that? <laughs> 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 well, if you notice, if you listen, if you, if, right. you know, and I. If I would have known, if it wasn't for Mr. Rogers, I would have known what a pentatonic was. Right, okay, right. I played trumpet when Mr. Rogers was there. But uh, uh, I found out later and, and learned a lot more later. And uh, it's mostly, almost the scales he used is pentatonic. What is right. pentatonic? Yes, I'm wrong. Start the next song. So do. Yes, sir. Come on, y'all. We sing this. Come on, y'all. We can do the horn from Kent. Please, come on, help me out, man. You know, I'm new at just cleaning stuff up, doing all this, this kind of stuff. I'm kind of new at this, so help me along. Come on, come on song. Come on.
Alex White. <laughs> Alex White, Alex White, give him a hand, please. Alex White. This is hard for any young play with a track that you never heard and probably can't hear and keep it in time. I know what it is. Any questions about Sir Duke or anything else? <laughs> anything else? Anybody want to No questions? Yeah, no yeah. Well, I know anything? When yes, sir. When you came up with, uh, when y'all came up with that line, uh, mm -hmm. was that fun to do? That face, that, that, uh. Was it fair to who? Was it fun to do that? Oh, man, but I know. Stevie, Stevie, one thing about Stevie's catalog, and I, I, that's the kind of I've been with him so long, is that he's one great creative person who, 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 who endeavors in trying to play all genres and all, com combine all kinds of music. If you, if you notice his music, it's, I mean, his catalog is so big, he's got so many different kinds of songs that, Every time, every chance you get a chance to play, it, it, it becomes fun. It becomes fun because you play something different every time. Mm -hmm. So this was another one. I mean, I was young. Right. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm what, 21, 22 years old, <laughs> and they're playing music like this. Never had heard anything like that before, as I was playing with a, a local group called The Final Decision, right. and it, 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 it was it was great. It was great. It was great. Yes, sir. Um, when, now on the tours now, mm -hmm. Stevie came, changed keys. Every other night, if he feels like it, he changed keys on you in a minute, dog. <laughs> Trust me, brother. And he will change. The show, right? You got to know that he will change keys. I've been, I've been with, I'm the lucky one. I've been with him so long that I can follow him. But okay. you should see some of the cats in the group. They be like, what, 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 what? What's going on? You know what I mean? You know Roman, your dog. Yeah, I know Roman's your dog. That's all. I got Roman again. I've been with Roman for years. That's for sure. I'm gonna do one thing right now. I never, I, I'm, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna, I get to it, I get to it, I get to it, I get to it, I wish to. I wanna, I wanna bring Ralph up. It's one thing that I never learned, uh, learned how to do, and I really appreciate knowing Ralph and his way he is, as, as upright. I played a couple of upright songs, but I never was taught on upright, I, I self-taught myself. So when it comes to things that, that comes with upright, I asked Ralph to come and help me out to explain different things about Boeing that you guys, I mean, I don't know if you guys do play upright, but I don't. I, I, I play ant upright, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I play ant, uh, I play ant, okay? But he plays it. So Ralph, I'm gonna give you a stage for a minute and you talk about Boeing. Oh, Boeing, Boeing. Who was supposed to say? Let me tell you this, though. Let me say this much. Ralph said he was gonna teach me how to bowl 10 years ago, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I was here for three years before we got Christmas. Let me give it let me give you the mic. Well, I was going home. No. <laughs> but Brother Nate brought me out tonight. Yay! And Lester Collins. Let's give Lester a hand. Yay. Even though he didn't even been rooming with Stevie, you can't see. And hitting all the wrong buttons. He got mad. I wasn't supposed to do nothing tonight. Oh, we don't need to do nothing. I just, okay. Now they got me up here. How you like me now, Les? <laughs> I'm just joking. But the thing about the um, bass violin, this is a, a Warwick uh, Triumph bass. So, for example, A flat in the half position is the first finger. A is second. B flat is the fourth finger. B, this is called shifting. B is with the second finger. C is with the uh, fourth finger, with the third to assist. C sharp is second. D with the fourth. D sharp is second finger. No, pay attention. Please. You know how much money it will cost you to get this right now? And I'm giving it to you. You getting it for, for free just about? Okay, we're in, the, we're in the start of the fifth position. This is E with the fourth finger. The sixth position, F, you eliminate the fourth finger. Use the first finger, F sharp, second finger. We're 
the harmonic, the seventh position, G, third finger, because the notes get narrower, narrower, and you have to eliminate the fourth finger. So I'm going to show you a chromatic scale going down with this technique. This is so you know where the notes are. because I do collegro with the bow. People think I'm crazy, but that's a technique, you know. It's a called collegro, to use the back of the stick, you know. Because see, we went to a school where we had a teacher like Ernie Rogers, Mr. Rogers. that taught us terminology, you know. And it's a good thing, just like Dr. Blessman. Knowledge is power. So never be closed-minded, and we can always improve. You know, I'm st I just left like Larry Coriel, and we were playing, man, we were playing so much stuff, and I'm listening to him trying to get something new, and then I turned into Ralph Hendricks. You know? <laughs> but anyway, this is a great instrument, and another thing about the bass that's unique, you shouldn't have had to give this microphone. The thing about the bass is very unique. That's good, I know you. But the thing about the bass is unique. Uh, the, the, uh, this is the original instrument of the Catholic Church. This is a, the bass is a spiritual instrument. People used to chant with the bass. Have you ever seen the top of a bass violin and has a scroll? Because those were religious scrolls. The Gregorian chants, the monks, they played basses and they drank chartreuse too. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna get back to Nate. And that's it about the bass. That's it. Can we get around, man? I want to I thank Ralph for coming down. I mean, I needed that. I needed that, and I thought he would be more than willing to do it for me, and I really appreciate it. He's doing it for everybody. Hey, you hooked me up with Larry Hart. Uh, <laughs> that's it. Um, I'm, 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 anybody might know this song? No, you're not. Oh, oh this would be good. You know, anybody know this song? Yeah. Okay, let's do this. This part, but my whole, the whole basis of this bass part right here is from Jameson. I learned so much by listening to Jameson. I used to, I was, I was very fortunate to know him, and he called me, he called me son. And I really appreciate that. Oh, my God. 
And it takes luck. I was lucky, but I was dedicated too. I used to stay in the weekends and play in the basement and, and here in Detroit to learn how to play bass. Listen to the record. Oh, you got some killer bass lines, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Listen to the records. I've been lucky. I've been blessed, and I thank God for the blessing. All right, now, if, if we wanted to keep up with you or see what you got, got coming up for the future, how can we get The Real Nate Watts. TheRealNateWatts.com. Right, That's yeah. my website, therealnatewatts.com. Okay, and, and what you got coming up? Huh? Oh, we're getting ready to go to, um, we're doing a house full of toys with Stevie. That's a, a benefit we do every year in L.A. And then we're going to Rio on the 21st of okay. Uh, December. Okay, and one last question. I'm going to have to edit this, but what uh -huh. kind of bases you uh, playing out of? I'm playing bosses. I play, I play but mostly bosses on the road now. I put all my good ones up. I, that's cool. that's, they do, they like to crush one of them one time, and they've been in storage ever since. But the bossa is a great bass. It's light, and it's got a good tone. You'll hear, you, you, when you play the stuff, you'll hear. It's got a good tone for them. I'm using Harky Amps. Matter of fact, I'm donating the Harky Amp to a cast tech here. Good. Yep, the amp up there? Yeah. Um, I got them good. in the center. Yeah, I'm donating that. That's Cass Tech High School. Yeah, because I was, gonna tell, I, was gonna, I was gonna send it to Northwestern, but they ain't got no music. <laughs> they ain't got no jazz yeah, band on. They, they, they took, they took everything. That's it. one thing that hurts me more than anything is that they took music away from my kids, from yeah. the kids yeah. in the city. All right, well, like I said, I ain't want to keep you in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Detroit Bass Players, we'd like to thank Mr. Nate Watts for hanging out with us here at the Detroit Best Bass Fest. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. All right. Yeah.